actually. All right, so look, before we get on to really the main meta practice, I really, I want to do a bit of a recap of what we learned at the previous retreat. And actually I want to go into something which I didn't do with you, Tracy, which I'm starting to teach more anyway. Um, but as a recap, uh, as a reminder, um, I talked about sort of the three principles of meditation, which are, I call it habituation, and, but really we're trying to develop this idea of samadhi. Now I'll be using these Pali words, so let me know if you want translation. Sam samadhi really kind of means mindfulness and concentration. It's, it's that meditative state of mind that we get into when we practice meditation on the breath. So that the habitual training of the mind just to stay steady and to stay focused on one object. Um, and then there's insight, as I said, and, or wisdom, understanding how the mind works. And then there's open heartedness, which is what this retreat is uh, all about. So Samadhi is, is a foundation. And if we're trying to develop uh, the meta, there's really two aspects. First of all, we have to generate it in our own mind stream. And then second, we actually need to sort of absorb ourselves into it. So otherwise it's just like a distracting thought. First of all, we start to find we've got kindness uh, towards a particular person, but if we're not stable, the mind will quickly find reasons why that person is not so nice, or we'll start thinking about another person or something like that. The mind will uh, wander too quickly and we won't have had a chance to really absorb into that state of beautiful energy which is kindness and compassion so we do need the um, we do need some samadhi or some concentration to help accelerate uh, the, the meditation practice all right and so when on the retreat the first meditation I, I spoke about was meditation on the body and um, it's a fairly easy meditation to do because the body's right there and it's also good in uh, reminding us to keep good posture. So we go through the seven point sitting posture, which is legs, make sure the legs are in the right position, back, make sure the back is nice and straight, um, hands, make sure the hands are uh, folded in meditation posture, either like this or like this, or uh, equanimous around the body. We, we, we check our arms and our shoulders, make sure we're not, we're not holding any tension in our shoulders. Uh, we check our head, make sure our head is an extension of our spine. A good visualization is being pulled up by the crown and, and keeping everything nice and straight if you can. And then we check our jaw because our jaw is often where people hold tension. So just let go of any tension in your jaw, maybe bring your jaw forward a little bit. And then we talk about our eyes. And our eyes can either be lightly closed or we can leave them slightly open. Uh, that's your choice. Um, but if they're open, we're looking down at 45 degrees and we try to keep our eyes either focused on a point or staring into space like beyond the floor and not moving. So we're definitely not sort of looking around with our eyes at what other people are doing because it's almost like the attention is not through our eyes, the attention is on what's going on in our own mind. So, that was a reminder of the body meditation, which you can do at the beginning of all meditations, just to mainly check that you're in the right position and to start gathering your mind into the present moment. The next meditation I talked about was meditation on the breath. So, breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. And anapanasati, so ana is uh, um, breathing in, panana is breathing out, and sati is concentration, or breathing in and breathing out. Anapanasati is more refined, it's often more calming because uh, the breath is a sort of a, a more calm object, a more refined object than the, than the body. Um, and also we, we, we're more fixed 
in our concentration because we usually we pick a point which is often on the insides of the nostrils so we can feel the air coming in and feel the air going out and but it doesn't need to be it could be at the diaphragm or at the lungs so that's probably the most common meditation that's taught is meditation on breathing in and breathing out so that's the second one we taught what I'm also doing now is I'm introducing a third meditation on the body which is called energy body meditation now um, I have to say I, I got this from a new teacher Rob the Bayer so if you're ever interested he's a great teacher and I've listened to a lot of his teachings now and much of this meta retreat is also sort of taken from a lot of his teachings um, and I found this to be a really positive um, meditation as well and that is to visualize that this body either has an energy body with it so sometimes you hear people talk about the physical body the emotional body the spiritual body uh, we're going to talk about the energy body and if you imagine that there's this energy pervading the body it can be an incredibly powerful object of meditation for a number of reasons which I'll, I'll talk about um, but to visualize this uh, we can imagine that we have energy pervading and even extending out from our physical body so we can either we can see it as you know almost a separate body to our physical body so we've got this energy pervading pervading out and this this sort of coming out from the body you might even want to even visualize it as the, the this is kind of like the real body this energy body is almost like the more more us than the physical body and you know the physical body we can cut a finger off and it doesn't mean we're less of a person it's, it's almost like this physical body is something we own and look after and almost the, the, phys the energy body is perhaps a closer representation of us and many traditions have this idea in Hinduism they have prana that goes through the body the prana uh, in Chinese traditions they have chi chi energy in Tibetan they have this thing called lung which is the air elements so they have the, the, the earth element the water element the fire element and then the air element is the flow of energy through the body and they call it lung and I'm sure that other traditions have similar sort of ideas of this energy body so the point is uh, it's flexible how you want to uh, imagine the energy body but by meditating on the energy body first of all it's even more refined and so it uh, can help us concentrate more the second is if you start to get feelings of meta or any feelings at all really you'll feel them and you will start to feel the, the shift of energy in your body you will become more attuned to the energy of the unconscious mind that is driving the body so for example for a time we might start fidgeting we might we might find we've got an itch here and a scratch there and our legs get uncomfortable we have to move them if you are attuned to the energy body you'll start to see the signals of that restlessness long before the body starts moving so the body will be sitting nicely you might have been sitting nicely for 15 or 20 minutes and then if you're attuned to the energy body you'll feel the restlessness and if it goes unchecked then which often it does at the beginning it'll start manifesting you'll start you'll start getting an itch up here and then you'll say wow was it was that really an itch or was that really a pain or was that agitation in the energy body that's just simply manifesting and and the symptom is coming kind of in response to the restlessness if i if i was able to get rid of that restlessness would that symptom have even 
eventuated. So it's interesting to see that. Likewise, if you start getting feelings of oneness with nature, or you start getting a sense of love to each of us in the room, that'll appear first in the energy body. So, so it's, a, a more, it's a more sensitive way to be aware of what's going on in your mind uh, because the energy body is really ultimately responding to thoughts that are going on, you know, at the conscious and the unconscious level. And as I said, if you want to look at it deeper, those thoughts are being often uh, arise through either connecting more into this sort of Buddha nature intelligence of the mind or the what we saw kalesa means these defilements or these things that are coming up which is either greed hatred or uh, confusion or ignorance um, that is stirring up our mind so uh, either way we want to be sensitive to that as it's coming up and meditate meditating on the energy body is a, is a great way to do this so what I want to do this evening, and I think even tomorrow morning, even before we get into Meta, is spend a really good amount of time on visualising and meditating on the energy body as our main object of meditation. And then when we turn to do meditation, to do Meta meditation, I'd like to do it always with a kind of a connection to this energy body. So, as we go through the weekend, it's going to be really, really helpful if you can sort of keep one part of the mind just aware of our energy body and what's going on, and the rest of it will be on the phrases that we'll be using or the visualizations that we'll be doing to try to develop this meta. Um, so, you're sensitive about. Uh, what's going on at every moment and you'll find sometimes that just one thought will have quite a significant effect on the, the energy body but if you're not concentrating on the energy body you'll miss it and you'll sort of just keep repeating these phrases and you won't be quite as uh, perceptive of how they affect the, the uh, how they're having an effect on your system does that make sense is there any questions in regards to that. All right, so I've gone off track. We'll go back to recapping. <laughs> another way to look at this, another way to uh, look at the mind is the mind can be um, divided into two parts of the mind during meditation. The first is awareness, which is a very spacious, holistic, uh, open per, uh, sense of perception of, of what's going on. So I'm aware of many things in this room. I can also be aware of what's happening internally. And it's going on at just the fringes of our conscious mind and even at the unconscious level, this awareness. And we can tune into that, this broad sense of awareness. Now, another way the mind can be used is with what we call attention. And attention is then when we focus in on something. So I might focus in on this cup when I go to have a drink of tea and a lot of my mind is focused on this particular cup. Ooh, lovely cup of tea. Um, and so that's the more central part of, of, of the mind. Now, the attention does things like judgment, discrimination, seeing the particulars, uh, analyzing, uh, making decisions, that sort of thing. And these are the different aspects of the mind. And in fact, in research and brain scans, you can see that they actually are different parts of the brain. So 
they say that you're a right-brained person. Right-brained persons are often considered more creative, a little bit more out there. And that is more, this is a real broad generality, where the awareness side of the mind is operating. And left brain is the more doers and the more logical type of people, and this is more where the attention side of the brain is, is operating. So, you know, there is some actual sort of physical evidence that these are actually two different parts of the brain. But um, irrespective of that, we want to um, know when we're operating out of awareness and know when we're operating out of attention. Now, they, they're both useful, okay? They, we, we want to develop both of them. Uh, but, but some of the things that are important in, in awareness is, first of all, awareness is uh, very expansive. And the thing about it is because it's not judging, because it's not um, quantifying, uh, it's, it's, it's very, there's no clinging involved. So there's basically no aversion or attachment in awareness. Awareness is just is. It's like, I'm aware of you, I'm aware of the room, I'm, I'm aware of the noises. But it, that's it, you know? It's only, it's only when attention gets involved that says, oh, those birds are beautiful. Or, oh, you know, the, the, the heat is too hot or the flies are too annoying or so it's the attention which does all the analyzing and actually is the thing that gets us into trouble you know but of course we need the attention to make decisions it's an important part of us so uh we yeah this is more important with developing samadhi is by opening up and becoming more spacious in our mind, we absorb ourselves into the awareness state of the mind and that can lead to a sense of openness, spaciousness and ultimately peace. You know, deep, beautiful peace and, and beautiful feelings even, even more than that. Um, but also, because it's open, it can also lead to mind wandering because there's no discrimination. So when we're in awareness, we hear the birds or we feel that we're hungry or whatever, and the mind doesn't have the discipline not to go there and start thinking about it. So that's where we need the attention, is we need the attention to bring the mind to a, a focal point and stay on something which is neutral, like the breath. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, Breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. So we have in our minds this interplay between attention being strong to keep us on a neutral object and awareness also being strong to keep us in this sense of spaciousness, openness and calmness. Does that make sense? Is that all good? So... We develop both of these capacities in the uh, uh, samadhi. Now, one little meditation which I think I'd like to do comes from the um, Advaita tradition, Advaita uh, Vedanta. There's a, there's a, uh, the Vedanta tradition is actually a Hindu tradition out of, um, obviously, out of India. And the Advaita is one sort of part of that one part of that. Anyway, that's background. And the, the way that they talk about it is that we can stand as awareness. Now, when we meditate, the eventual goal is we actually lose this sense of a real self. We actually see that the self is an illusion, okay? But that sense of self as an illusion doesn't come until like the very, very end of the path, okay? Up until that, we've always got this sense of this is me doing this to, to you know, to Tracy or to Gosha or, or Gosha or, or whatever. And um, the Advaita tradition, which I quite like, one of their meditations, it says that when you think of the self, 
you can generally think of the self in three different ways. The first way is the body, that this physical body is doing something to, uh, to you know, drinking a cup of tea or talking to this particular person. And when we think of body, if something goes wrong with the body, we get very, very upset and we, you know, have all this pain and suffering. And, but there are people who think like that. The second way is to think the body is just something we own and use. And the real essence of me is my mind. Okay, so it's my decisions, it's my judgments, it's my thinking, yeah, is, is mind. And so we can stand as the body or we can stand as the mind. And in general, that's what we're doing most of the time is one of those two things. But the, the Advaita traditions say, well, there's one more way in which we can stand, which is much more helpful, and that is with this idea of awareness. We can stand as awareness, as if we are a vehicle uh, for awareness, um, and the true essence of who we are is just aliveness, is just openness and perception. So, you know, there is this spark of life, isn't there, in us. And um, uh, the, the base of this spark of life is just being able to sense, being able to, you know, be aware. It's just awareness. And so the Advaita traditions say you can stand as that and then see the mind one the mind thinking and the body doing its thing as sort of subsets of that and they belong to that state of awareness which is the real essence of ourselves so it's it's very um how can i say it's very uh, you know it's, it's so, sort of very rarefied or it's out there um but by doing that uh you know, we attune ourselves to staying in that. And in a way, there's a connection between standing as sort of the energy body, which is the awareness of what's happening, and, and this, this idea of awareness. So just to get yourself used to this sense of awareness, we're going to do a meditation where we try to imagine that in our essence, who we really are is just awareness of all things. And any thoughts, any mind activity is secondary, and then our body is secondary. Does that make sense? Is that good? And what we're going to do is go around the circle, and we will describe what it's like to be, uh, stand as awareness. All right, just so that we get aware of that. All right, so we'll start a meditation. Are you okay to meditate in your chairs? Do you want to sit on cushions? Okay, take a few moments. I'll just get my mat. Okay. Yeah, it's a bit hard, this floor, so. Oh, there's a whole bag of cushions right there. Oh, okay. So, oh. um, oh, I, I can. Uh, that's okay, why don't you lay your further away? Yeah, I should have, yeah, there you go. Okay. You check where you want. I'd like to get them out. Really, two or three. There's like 20 or 30 cushions in here. <laughs> so many cushions. Yeah, there you go. Ooh. Oh, I didn't stop it. Oh, it's a bad one. 